Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Mark Milwee, Trinity, Alabama, Mount View Baptist Church. I um, want to begin a new study uh, today. Uh, the study I want to begin today, I'm, I'm calling Grow Old Along With Me. It's uh, based upon my book by the same title. I'm, there you go. Grow Old Along With Me. I wrote this book a couple of years ago. And uh, just um, let, me, let me tell you why I think this is important and why I wrote this book. Uh, it seems to me that a, a lot of churches uh, are pushing out their seniors. You know, they, they're letting them know, you know, uh, they're going in a different direction and that sort of thing. And, and I think that's a tragic uh, mistake. Um, I believe that senior adults uh, bring a lot of value and wisdom uh, to a congregation. And uh, so I want to I wanna address that. That's, that's one of the reasons I wrote the book. But I also wrote the book because I've, I've dealt with a lot of seniors uh, through the years. And, um, uh, you know, I want to challenge seniors to bring value uh, to their uh, church. A and then uh, the third reason I, I wrote the book is the subtitle of the book is Aging Gracefully in a Graceless Age. And, you know, whether we want to admit it or not, we're all getting older. And... Um, you know, I've witnessed people who have aged gracefully, or I've also witnessed people who have gone into their later years kicking and screaming and and not being very pleasant to be around. And so we have a choice, I believe, as we get older. Uh, we have a choice to uh, get better or to get bitter. And so I want to challenge, and, and I want to say too, I think there's a misconception about my, my book. I, I think a lot of people think, oh, this is just for old people. But it's not uh, because, um, you know, uh, we all fall into this category. I mean, every day uh, we're getting older. Now, a lot of people don't want to think about it, and uh, they want to pretend it's not happening, but, but it is. And so, uh, anyway, having said all that, uh, I hope you'll stick with me and enjoy this uh, time together. Uh, so let's uh, let's get started. I can't think of a better way to introduce this study than by sharing the opening stanza, one of my favorite poems. It's the uh, poem that was written by Robert uh, Browning. It's titled Rabbi Ben Ezra, and this is what he says. He says, "Grow old along with me; the best is yet to be, the last of life for which the first was made. Our times are in His hand. Uh, who saith a whole I planned? Youth shows but half. Trust God, see all." nor be afraid. I love that line there where he says, last of life for which the first was made. So I'll, I'll begin by saying, uh, you know, I love seniors. Uh, I was very close to my grandparents on both sides of my family. My, my, I lived next door to one set of grandparents, and my uh, grandmother on the other side was also uh, very close to me. So, uh, uh, you know, let me just say that up front. But now having said that, <laughs> Let, let me um, uh, encourage you not to tune me out and say, well, this study is obviously not for me. Uh, let, let me say why I think that would be a big mistake. There are currently 42.6 million people in the United States who are 65 or older. Now, that's very remarkable when you consider that at the turn of the 20th century, about 120 years ago, uh, there were only 3 million people in our country who were that age. However, what's even more incredible than those two figures is that by the year 2030, so 10 years from now, there will be 70 million people in this category. And by 2060, there will be 90 million <laughs> senior adults in the United States. I, I don't know. That that makes me want to go out and buy some stock in Geritol or something. <laughs> but one of my favorite sayings about getting older is this. Uh, getting older is really not all that bad when you consider the alternative. And uh, there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, but the person who said you're only as old as you feel right after you try to demonstrate how young you are uh, summed up the, the best test of aging. In, in fact, uh, uh, you know, we're all getting a little bit older, and I believe the church that taps into this growing population is going to be uh, headed in the right direction. The Bible has a lot to say about aging, and it gives us plenty of examples of men and women who have served God faithfully up into a ripe old age. 
uh, I think immediately of Abraham and Sarah and Moses and Joshua and Caleb. And, and then in the New Testament, there's, there's John and Zechariah, Elizabeth, Simeon, Anna. I mean, the Bible is full of individuals who have served God faithfully all of their lives. Inter illustrating that God is interested not just in how we start in our Christian life, but how we finish uh, is also uh, very, very important. So my desire uh, in, in this study is to challenge you to see the valuable contributions uh, the elderly make in the life of a church. Uh, I don't want to get tossed out on my ear when I reach a certain age. I, I want to faithfully serve the Lord all my life for the rest of my life. Uh, I believe that we need to recapture the respect, honor, and dignity ascribed to the elderly uh, in Scripture. The admonition to respect your elders is not just a quaint saying from yesteryear. It is the prescription uh, for the health and vitality of any church that understands the importance of valuing one of our most precious uh, assets. Uh, older men and women uh, accomplished remarkable things in the pages of Scripture and we need to learn from their examples and respect those so that God has placed uh, in our lives. I, I came across a Pickles comic strip a few years ago where two older men were sitting on a park bench, and, and one of them's reading the newspaper, and he turns to his friend and he says, Well, you know, it says here that one-third of all retirees age 65 or older would prefer to still be working. His friend said, Yeah, I know I would. I prefer for my knees to still be working, my back, <laughs> my circulatory system. You, you, get, you get the idea. But all joking aside, there is a grain of truth uh, in that uh, cartoon. Uh, seniors who are committed to the Lord want to work and contribute and make a difference uh, with their lives. They, they want to make an impact uh, all the days of their life. Uh, uh, unfortunately, though, I've observed that in many respects, America is not the nicest place in the world uh, to grow old. Uh, I say this because in our country, so much emphasis is placed upon youth. Now, I'm not against youth or reaching out to the young people. I mean, I was a youth minister for a number of years. Uh, but, you know, churches don't need any encouragement in that area. Uh, they're already doing that. Uh, we, we need to consider this growing population uh, in, in our country and how that, I think, unfortunately, we're, we're neglecting them. Uh, we have a tendency to discard our older adults uh, with all of their wisdom, uh, insights, and potential. Uh, we've experienced this in, in my immediate family. Uh, uh, my father, who was a pastor for many, many years, uh, was unable to find another place of ministry after he went through a heart bypass uh, surgery, and everybody kept telling him, "Oh, they, they, you know, they wanted a younger person to appeal to a younger uh, generation." My father-in-law also experienced a similar I I I situation in his uh, technology job. Uh, I, I clipped a story out of the newspaper uh, several years ago that struck a deep chord within me. It illustrates the tragic consequences of neglecting uh, the elderly. Th this lady writes, she says, Today I entered a fast food restaurant and there was a little old lady standing outside with a shopping cart. She had a dress on and the usual, usual cobbler's apron over it, uh, ready to preside over her kitchen like thousands of other grandmas all over the country. She looked up at me and asked if I could spare a little change so she could get a little something. Now this lady writing the article says, I, you know, I'm a veteran of con artists. I spend a lot of my time in the inner city, and, and there's not too many stories I have not heard. She said, I know the local homeless and not so homeless, and I, and I can spot a fake a mile away. She said, this lady was really in need. She stood quietly while I pulled out what I had, and as I handed her the money, she started to shake and cry. I hugged her and told her to get what she could. She immediately went in and ordered the smallest hamburger and a coffee, and she spent the next little while eating the hamburger and getting several refills of coffee. As she left, she came back smiling and said, Thank you, honey. I'm saving the rest for dinner. Now, the lady writing this article closed with uh, these words. She said, I am a staunch re supporter of reforming the welfare system as I daily see gross abuse. But nowhere... Nowhere in this great country of ours should our grandmothers be hungry. 
Well, I tend to agree with her. It's maddening when we neglect the growing needs uh, of this um, um, expanding uh, population. However, all that being said, um, you know, I, I've seen a number of uh, churches uh, advertise by saying something like, this is not your grandma's church. Or, you know, are you tired of traditional church? Or a new church for a new day. And I understand the message that these churches are trying to communicate. They want people to know that their church is young and hip and exciting. However, when they launch their new work by intentionally alienating uh, the seniors, or even worse, when they announce to a transitioning congregation, you know, we're moving in a different direction and, and you older folks need to find a different place uh, to worship. Man, I, I think that's a big mistake. I, I believe you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. You have alienated a large and growing segment of the population who desperately love Jesus and want to worship him. You're hurting yourself by not taking into consideration all the wonderful gifts and talents and abilities that, that these older adults bring to the table, not to mention, listen, the financial st stability that seniors bring to a church. Ed Lewis, uh, the executive director of uh, what's called CE National, in an article titled Keeping Older Adults in the Church, he writes about uh, his concerns with how older uh, believers, excuse me, about how believers view older adults in the church today. He began this article by highlighting numerous biblical reasons for reaching younger people. But then he adds, but here's what scares me. We're losing our older adults. We must honor older believers, and we need to reach older people for Christ. He says in the USA, there are more people over 50 than there are under 18. Who is reaching these folks? Are we losing them? Are, are they becoming detached from the church? And on top of all, the Bible honors age, not youth. Job 12.12 12 says, wisdom is with the aged and understanding in length of days. It also states that young men must not rebuke an elder, and they are to treat elderly women like mothers. Man, I wholeheartedly agree with what he's saying. we got to find ways to incorporate senior adults into the life of, of the church. Uh, Charlie Sell, in his book, Transitions Through Adult Life, says, From those who study the age, the message is clear. They want to be involved. They often feel discriminated against when excluded from offices and positions because of age. What older adults want is to be integrated into the life of the church. I've seen this uh, personally. It's, it's one of the things that motivated me to, to look into this issue uh, because, uh, you know, in some places, the, the seniors are being just, just pushed aside. And it's sad. I want to give you some examples of that. Uh, the church I pastored in uh, San Diego for a number of years, uh, we offered two uh, worship experiences on Sunday morning. Uh, the early service was uh, traditional with, with choir and organ and hymns, and, and it appealed primarily to our seniors, not, not exclusively, but, you know, we had a lot of seniors that loved that service. The second service was contemporary with a band and drums and guitars, you know, and all that. And it primarily appealed to the younger generation, although we had some older folks that, that went to it. Well, guess which service grew the most while I was at the church? Now, that was Southern California. It was in one of the trendiest places in America. But our early service grew on a consistent basis. Um, and, and I was very intrigued by that. Uh, in fact, uh, I did an analysis at one point and, and determined that 90% of our income was coming out of that traditional service. Now, I'm not down on contemporary worship. I, I enjoyed the second service, uh, and, and I enjoy contemporary worship. However, I'm trying to show the folly of alienating uh, the, all the seniors in your community. Uh, it certainly required extra time and energy and effort to provide that additional service. But, but it also paid high dividends for the church. Our, our traditional service, I believe, grew for two reasons. First, we were one of only a few local options for the seniors that wanted a traditional service. In some places, it's getting harder and harder to, to find that type of service. And then sadly, many of our folks uh, that attended that service uh, came from a nearby, uh, what had been a mega church, that told its members, uh, many of whom had been in that church for over 60 years, 
that they were moving in a new direction and they needed to find a different place to worship. We didn't seek these people out. Uh, many of them came because they heard through friends that we had something for them and that we valued them. I'm telling you what, it was heartbreaking to sit and talk with an elderly couple and hear them tell you that the church they had given the greater part of their lives to didn't want them to come anymore. These were former leaders and deacons and, and elders. These were not people who were gossips or even people who were trying to spread nasty rumors about their previous church. These people were heartbroken and saddened by this turn of events. And, and we had the joy of, of welcoming many of them into our, our church family. Uh, the second reason our, our church grew in this area is because uh, of the value that we placed upon uh, seniors. We didn't see them as second-class citizens who had outlived their effectiveness. We, we embraced them. We provided opportunities for leadership and participation. We, we provided opportunities for fellowship and for growth. We valued their contributions and let them know that we were proud to have them as part of our church family. Stephen Matson, in an article titled, Have Churches Abandoned the Elderly?, says it's easy to stereotype old people as complainers and people who are out of touch. But it's time to start honoring the elderly within our churches and realize they have as just as much value and worth as anyone else. They are part of God's good creation. Now, I hesitate to share this, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and share it because uh, uh, the only way I can get some people's attention is by talking about money. We had a gentleman that started attending our church who had recently been widowed. And, you know, we made him feel welcome, included him in our activities, uh, treated him with dignity and respect. After approximately a year of attending our services, he called and set up an appointment with me. He wanted to talk to me. And it was during this time that he told me all of his story. I'd heard parts of it, but I'd never heard it all. It seems that he and his wife have been very active members in at this other local church for many years. <clears throat> Regrettably, his wife con, you know, co contracted cancer and suffered for over a year with many difficult procedures and many hospital stays before her death. Although uh, they had been very active in this previous church, uh, nobody came to visit with them. Nobody called a check on her during her long and protracted uh, illness. And as a result of this negligence, the first Sunday following her death was his first Sunday at our church. He then shared with me how he had come into a great sum of money and the desire of his heart was to, to give some of it to the church. Well, I had no idea how much he was talking about and I graciously thanked him for his kindness and generosity and for thinking about the church. Later that week, he brought me a check for $50,000. He also told me there would be another 50 coming before the end of the year. Now, for all intensive purposes, that money should have and would have gone to the other church had somebody taken the time to minister to he and his wife during their time of need. We didn't welcome and embrace this man because we thought we might get some money out of him someday. I didn't have any idea he had two nickels to rub together. We valued him as a person of dignity and worth. And then, you know, God brought this uh, um, wonderful gift. So does that mean the same thing will happen to you if, if your church starts embracing senior adults? Well, of course not. But it's still the right thing to do. It's the honorable thing to do. All people are precious in God's sight, including our senior adults. They have wisdom and skill and an eagerness to serve. A few years ago, I was at a pastor appreciation luncheon where the speaker asked all the pastors in the room to stand up. Well, the crowd applauded, and, and then he asked everybody to sit down who had been a pastor for one year or less. He had folks then sitting down in five-year increments. Uh, when he got to 20 years or less, I was still standing, and over half the room was already seated. I thought, man, I must be getting getting older. <laughs> Uh, I've been a pastor now for over 25 years, and if you add the years I spent in youth ministry, I've been in full-time ministry over 30 years now, and I can hardly believe it's been uh, that long. It's been an interesting and rewarding experience. I like what Paul says to the church in Philippi. 
forgetting what lies behind, straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. My prayer is that with God's help, I'll be able to press on for, for many more years. In fact, compared to the two guys in the room who are still standing at the end of the recognition, I'm just getting started. Both of them have been faithfully serving the Lord for over 50 years. Now, I applaud them for their faithfulness and encourage you to continue living faithfully each and every day. I've said many times before, I believe that consistency over time is where the real growth occurs in the Christian life. Uh, seniors have so much to offer uh, since they have age and experience uh, under their belt, and they, uh, they know when they're truly valued and appreciated. Now, I want to be quick to say this doesn't mean that they have to be catered to and, and, and certainly not valued more than anybody else in the congregation, but they should be respected and provided with an opportunity for their voice uh, to be heard. Let me offer a few suggestions uh, to uh, minister to seniors more effectively. First, uh, give them an opportunity to serve in meaningful ways. Uh, treat them with respect and dignity. Find ways uh, for uh, the sen seniors to minister to each other. Encouraging, uh, encourage mentoring relationships between seniors and younger folks. Uh, do some intergenerational uh, events where everybody's together, so... You know, they can, you know, interact. Uh, consider um, uh, offering, if your church is large enough, uh, uh, an additional uh, service with a traditional approach. Uh, Ed Lewis, uh, the guy that I quoted earlier, uh, offers this wonderful advice. He says, love the older people. Mobilize them for service. They want to be involved in helping to make a difference, and if you honor them, let them be honored by allowing them to be seen in the church. They are just as important as the other believers. So here's the crisis as I see it. We have this, this ever-increasing, expanding population of senior adults who are being pushed out of the church instead of being embraced and valued they have important and significant contributions to make. So the question we have to ask ourselves is this, are we going to obey the word of God and respect our elders? Well, that's the subject of our study uh, next week. But before I leave you, let me, let me give you a few questions that you can ponder and think about. Do you value and honor the seniors in your church? Do you treat them with dignity and respect? Do they know how much you value and appreciate them? What could your church do to reach more people in this growing age group? Well, God bless you. Thank you for watching today.